morning. Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, and to this worship service, Sunday, December 13th, 2020. A very special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is the third Sunday of the very special season of Advent leading up to Christmas. Our worship theme for Advent is I Believe Even When, and the focus for this Sunday is I Believe in God, Ode to Joy. More simply put, joy. And our preacher this morning who will be sharing with us this joy is our own Reverend Laura Barnes. We very much look forward to her message. And let me put in a pitch right here, if I may. Reverend Laura will also be leading our Bible study and fellowship this coming Wednesday, December 16th at 4 p.m. So please put that on your calendar if it isn't already. Now, Advent is a time when we celebrate and share the light of Christ even in the darkness. For those who have an Advent wreath, I invite you to have it at the ready. We will be lighting the first, second, and third candles of the Advent wreath shortly. For all of you, I invite you, if you can do so safely, to have a candle ready or another light source, and please light that up when I light the third candle of Hillcrest's Advent wreath. During the Advent season, our liturgist is not presenting the news of community, Know that the written news of the community is circulated via eblast. If you'd like to be added to that contact list, please email me at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. And know that at the very close of the service, during the postlude, you'll see highlights of our news of community printed on the screen. Pay attention for all the special services, events, and opportunities that are upcoming. And now, Let's enjoy a wonderful Hillcrest Advent tradition together as we sing a few Christmas carols before the service. David Durant will introduce that to us in a moment. I invite you to sit up, even stand up, for our Hillcrest Every Sunday in Advent carol sing. David? One of our cherished traditions during Advent at Hillcrest is the weekly carol sing. I invite you to join with our soloists and sing heartily and with joy, knowing that wherever you are, your voice is lifted up, along with your Hillcrest family and others, who are all joining for the carols sing in our worship service today.
And now, please join me in our responsive opening prayer. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. And now let's join in singing Help us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as the pregnant pause before joyful new beginnings. Amen. Please join me in lighting the third candle, the candle of joy. Today we light the candle of Advent 3, the candle of joy. We remember Mary and all she must have been going through, and how she centers herself with the challenges and opportunities. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. We light the candle of joy. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the child. This third Sunday of Advent is probably my favorite, because it's the Sunday of joy. And who doesn't like joy? As we talk about spreading God's light in the world, let's think about some of the ways that we can spread the light of joy. 
What are some things that fill you with happiness, that fill you with joy, make you feel loved and warm and happy? What we might call the Christmas spirit. Maybe it's opening presents. Maybe it's singing together. Maybe it's even eating the cookies that I know we're going to bake later today. Think about that feeling and think about some ways you can spread it to others. And let's sing together that song that we've been singing this Advent. And I do want you to sing at your computer, either together with your family and friends or alone. If someone walks in on you and you look silly and they get a laugh, think how much joy that'll bring to them. All right, let us sing together. One, two, three. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. All right, I'll see you all in Sunday school. Our first lesson is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61. It's a lesson that Mary likely knew well, as we will hear shortly. Now, from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Your baby boy would someday walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child. Oh, 
Our Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. I will read through verse 45, and then Reverend Laura will pick up on her reflection, verses 46 to 56, as Mary speaks or sings what we know as the Magnificat. Hear now our Gospel reading. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And the good news of the gospel lesson will continue as Reverend Laura reads on in her reflection. Today we will continue our reading in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 
verses 46 through 55, the canticle of Mary, the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of this servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who have fear of the Lord from generation to generation. God has shown strength of the arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Thus ends our reading of the gospel text. A blessed Advent morning to you all. Today our focus is on joy. I would like to offer that joy is something we invite into our lives, especially in times like these that feel so difficult and troubling. So I invite you to just open yourself to joy. Let's pause for a moment and reflect on what brings us joy, my friends. Perhaps it's a pup with a silly Santa hat on his head. I know that our furry friends can bring us great joy. Maybe you have been hiking around your neighborhood these days and have appreciated the efforts of your neighbors to share their joy. I think that there has been a monumental effort, at least in my area of Concord, to put up decorations for our children to enjoy and delight in. There are so many yards around here that are filled with Frosty the Snowman, Disney characters, and many, many minions. Or perhaps it's children acting silly and having fun, like these two little elves. Here are some of my favorites playing around with gifts that their yaya sent them in the mail. Well, I will miss being with them this Christmas due to the stay-at-home order, which is currently in place. I will get to share in their joy through the pics their parents send me and over Zoom once a week. Every time I see their little faces on the computer screen, I feel a deep sense of joy come over me. Whatever brings you joy these days, it is my wish that each of us be willing to discover more of it each and every day this Advent season. Just open yourself to joy. One thing that has brought me deep joy during the season of Advent for many years is the story of this courageous woman named Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the young woman who said, let it be, and brought the Messiah into our broken world. Mary, the young, unmarried woman, almost a child herself, who felt that she was called to be a vessel for God's purpose in our world. Mary, who, like Isaiah, felt the Spirit of the Lord upon her and was thus called to participate in God's plan for humankind. Mary, the wife of Joseph, the carpenter, the mother of Jesus bar Joseph, the cousin of Elizabeth, the auntie of John the Baptist. Mary, who sings that she has been blessed among women to be chosen to bring this beautiful baby boy into the world to save it, to make it whole once again, or at least try. When Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth, there was great joy among the two cousins, and they were able to share their thoughts and feelings with one another. It is such a gift to have a friend or relative like that to share our deepest joys and concerns with, like our church family and others that surround us today in worship and in fellowship later on. It is Mary, her song and her story, that can bring us all joy in this dark time, this time of shorter days and longer nights. 
this time of a seemingly endless pandemic, this time of worry and concern for our nation and our world. Isaiah claims that the Spirit of God came upon him and filled him with the urge to bring good news to the oppressed. Mary also reminds us that it is time to do the same, to bring more joy to our world and to say yes to God. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says, and we are asked to do the same. <clears throat> Joy, just open yourself. Let's look again at our scripture text for today from the Gospel of Luke, first chapter, the Song of Mary, our beloved Magnificat. Mary begins her beautiful canticle or song with praise. She lifts up God and claims the joy she is feeling in her soul. She feels joy around the idea of bringing a new baby into the world. She also feels joy for her cousin, Elizabeth, and her new baby. Mary honors her feelings and honors her relationship to God with this song. Mary offers us a way to begin our pilgrimage towards joy as well. Let us all begin our days with an offering of praise and noticing our blessings. Then, well, she begins with sort of a statement of faith, if you will. Mary knows that the world she lives in is completely out of balance, that people are desperate for God. Mary understands that humankind needs to be healed. She believes to the core of her soul that the baby she carries can help humanity turn the corner on greed, on guilt, and on injustice. Mary knows the world has a great need, and she sings about the joy that a new baby can bring to that world. Mary also obviously believes that God can change the world. God can change us, one heart at a time, one soul, one tiny baby at a time. It is this belief, I think, where I resonate with Mary the most. I still believe our world can change. I still believe that the best of humankind can rise above greed and guilt and all those things that drag us down. I still believe that humanity is worth saving and that together, buoyed by the Magnificat and just plain old grit, we can be reminded of how to do this together. Mary offers praise. Mary offers hope. And finally, Mary offers us faith. From the depth of her soul, Mary sings about God's mercy. God's mercy is on those who fear God. Mary believes that God's mercy is for those who have faith the size of a mustard seed. Mary believes that God's mercy will endure forever, and she shares this deep faith with her cousin, Elizabeth, and ultimately with all of us. Now, there is a story about Mary that I want to share with you in closing. It is her appearance to an indigenous Aztec Indian deep in the heart of Mexico about 500 years ago. She appeared to Juan Diego, in the form of La Virgen de Guadalupe, and asked him to help her build a magnificent cathedral. Being a humble man, he asked how this would be possible. Guadalupe asks for his trust and sends him to the Bishop of Mexico. Several miraculous signs are offered to the Bishop to assure him that Juan Diego is, in fact, bringing a message from Mary herself. The final sign is the image of a pregnant Mary with rays of sun behind her and the world at her feet that miraculously appears on the inside of his cloak. As a result, the magnificent Catedral de Guadalupe was built and still stands today on a hill at the heart of Mexico City. If you would like to hear more about this wonderful story, please make plans to join us this Wednesday, December 16th at 4 p.m. for a discussion about the miracle of Guadalupe. This tile mosaic of Guadalupe is located 
up at top of the hill at San Damiano Retreat Center in Danville if you would like to visit yourself. This beautiful tale of Guadalupe is a story of courage, of faith, and of great joy. It is a story of one human's seemingly impossible journey who allows himself to be inspired by Mary, and thus the story ends with a miracle. Like Juan Diego, we are also invited to open ourselves to the possibility that Mary is inviting us to do what may feel impossible during these difficult times. Mary invites us all to being our day by offering praise, to notice the brokenness all around us, and yet, and yet, to still respond to God with faith and with hope. May we consider the possibilities when we just open ourselves to joy this Advent season. Amen. And now, as we enter into our litany of belief, in just a moment, I will ask you to join me in making these important statements of belief or faith. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even when our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it's important to call out, to name and to claim who we are and the consequences of our wrongs, and in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name and claim our belief that sharing joy, even as God shares joy with the world, is a faithful response. Please join me in these statements of faith. I will begin. I believe that we have sometimes been silent in the face of injustice and... I believe that we are capable of raising our voices and insisting on goodness for all. I believe that we have been afraid of feeling deeply, making our joy small. And I believe that the deep joy of community can always be present, even in hard times. I believe that sometimes we wonder if we can make a difference, and I believe that small acts of kindness and help do make a real difference. We believe even when we are discouraged and we believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer us joy. And let all of us say together, Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness, and wonders of His love, and wonders of His love, and wonders and wonders of His love. I invite you to get in a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can. I invite you to a deep breath and a deep listening posture. 
perhaps eyes closed or fixed on a candle, as we prepare for a time of prayer. The gentle Paul of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still pools of quietness. The dwelling place of God Meet me in the stillness, Lord Be the air I breathe Meet me in the stillness, Lord Free me to receive everlasting God. On this third Sunday of Advent, we remember Mary, her strength, her wisdom, and her faith, all of which are embodied in those words she spoke to the angel. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your will. Let her faith inspire us. May we draw courage from those words as we face the challenges that life throws at us and the work that you've given us to do in the world. We're praying today for those who are in frontline healthcare positions, helping to work with the pandemic. We're praying for politicians and for leaders, for all those who are traveling and for those who don't have a stable home. We're praying for those who are sick, for those who are suffering with illness and injury, and for those who have passed on. And we're praying as well for those who we name, either in our hearts, silently, or aloud. And let us add to those who have been named those of our Hillcrest family who are in need of a special prayer, Anne, Betty, John, Kathy, Norm, Adele, Ron, Larry, Dylan, Chris, Doug, Daniel, and Hannah. And I ask your presence, O God, on the things that are too deep for words, or that we are unable to express with words. Hold us and comfort us and bring us hope through your loving compassion and transforming spirit. And let us all join together in prayer as we speak those words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to believe in God, even when we can't see the light. As an act of faith, we continue to send our pledges or offerings through the mail or online, knowing that in doing so, we are showing light to others. Your generous gifts of time and talent will strengthen the work of Hillcrest. Let us pray. Beloved, creating God. Thank you for the gift of faith that we know you are there even when we can't see you. Help us to be the light for others that through giving of ourselves and our treasure we can see the light in ourselves. Amen. a hopeful heart believe and shine your light believe because the song we sing is sung for all believe with a hopeful heart believe and shine your light believe because the song we sing is sung for all Let the weak say we are strong, let the poor say we are rich, because of what our God has done for us. And now, let the weak say we are strong, let the poor say we are rich, because of what our God has done for us.
teach us how to love each other by that love our joy renew. Throw off now the chains of ancient bitterness and enmity, and in hand let's walk together on the path of liberty. Hark, there is a new dawn breaking. Raise your voices now as one. Though by history divided, reconciled in unison. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Boundless love is waiting for us, reconciling race and clan. Ever singing, move we forward, faithful in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. And now I invite you to hold up the third candle of your Advent wreath, if you can do so safely, or any candle or light source that you have with you. Hold it high for the blessing. We wait for justice, and we work for change. We wait for restored health, and we work to heal. We wait for wholeness, and we work at binding brokenness in ourselves and others. We wait for peace and we work to eliminate fear and hatred. Like the sun that shines even on cloudy days, fill our fear-filled world with acts of joy. Go into your lives, humming the tunes that deepen the joy within you. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Amen. And now let us pass the peace of Christ, the peace of God's ever-creating and joy-giving and fear-reducing wisdom, one with another. I invite you to open your heart to all in our Hillcrest family and our whole human family and to the whole of creation and say with me, the peace of Christ be with you. And now respond, and also with you. Amen. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping on Sunday morning, December 13th, 2020, know that we will be gathering at 11 a.m. via Zoom for a time of fellowship and sharing. The information to join that meeting has been circulated. If you're worshiping with us for the first time and haven't received it or otherwise have questions about it, please email me now at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. And a reminder, as you listen to the postlude, slides with the news of community will come up on the screen. Go in peace, shelter in peace, experience your connection with God and each other and with the whole of creation in peace. Amen.